up till now we've been dealing just with nouns. Uh, now we want to be able to describe those nouns, and to describe them we're going to use adjectives. Uh, if you remember from elementary school, or uh, adjectives describe nouns. And in Greek, they're going to match the noun they're modifying. All right, so when they describe, we say they modify nouns. They're going to modify, they're going to match the noun they're modifying in gender. So if the noun is masculine, the adjective has to be masculine. If the noun is feminine, the adjective has to be feminine, and so forth. They're going to match a number. So if the noun is singular, the adjective has to be singular. And if the noun is plural, the adjective has to be plural. And they're going to match in case. So if the noun isn't nominative, the adjective has to be nominative. Uh, if the noun is genitive, the adjective has to be genitive, and so on. And so they're going to match in gender, number, and case. And this is important, not necessarily in ending. And we've seen this already with, with uh, the articles, right? The articles uh, don't necessarily match the noun. They're modifying by ending, but they do match in gender, number, and case. Now there are three types of adjectives. Uh, we're going to be dealing in this lesson with just one type, and that's adjectives of the first and second declension. So this is one single type. Uh, so they decline like first and second declension nouns. Uh, now to break this down, the first the, the feminine adjective is going to decline like the first declension and the masculine and neuter adjectives are going to decline like second declension nouns. Right, so first declension is feminine, second declension is masculine and neuter. So let's take a look at how to decline these nouns because if they have to match in gender, number, and case. We're going to need to decline them. We're going to need to be able to have all genders, all numbers, and all cases. So if you do some quick math, that ends up being roughly um, 30 different forms. Okay, so when we, and there are two, going to be two types of this first and second declension adjective, the eta type and the alpha type. So let's start with the eta type. Uh, when we lay out a declension, of adjectives, we're going to put the masculine first, the feminine, and then the neuter. And we're going to do nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, and vocative, just as we did with nouns. So let's take a look at these, and we'll start with the masculine, uh, the masculine adjective. So agathos, agathe, agathon, uh, noble or good. And you'll notice the endings agathos, agathu, agatho, agathon, agathe, agathoi, agathon, agathois, agathus, agathoi. They are second declension endings. Right? And you'll know it's a uh, eta type because the feminine, agathe, is eta. <clears throat> and you'll know it's first and second declension type because we have the os, a, on. So, First and second declension types always have three principal parts, os, a, or a, if it's an alpha type, and on. So the masculines decline just like second declension. The feminine types, agathe, agathes, agathe, agathane, agathe, agathai, agathon, agathais, agathas, agathai. Oh, just like our first declension. And our neuters, agathon, agathu, agatho, agathon, agatho, thon, agatha, agathon, agathois, agatha, agatha. Just like our second declension neuters. So if you've been diligent in memorizing your endings, the adjectives will give you no problem whatsoever. So here's our eta type using the model agathos. Uh, the, ad the thing to notice is that the accents are persistent. Uh, so they stay, they try to stay where they are in the nominative singular. Right. Now the other type is the alpha type adjective. We call this the alpha type because the stem ends in epsilon, iota, or rho, just like with first declension nouns, forcing the eta into an alpha. Now other than the feminine, which has that alpha in the singular, our endings are exactly as we'd expect. Axios, axiu, axio, axion, axie, axioi, axion, axiois, axius, axioi. Feminine, axia, axias, axia, axian, axia. 
oxii, oxion, oxiais, oxii, oxii. And the neuter is as you'd expect. Uh, the difference being oxion and oxion, oxia and oxia in our accusative, nominative and accusative, singulars and plurals. One thing to draw note on in terms of adjectives, uh, in terms of accents, the feminine genitive plural follows the accent for the masculines. Right, so remember the first declension, genitive plural generally had a circumflex over the omega. It doesn't in the adjectives. So again, to reiterate, if you've been diligent in memorizing your declensions, you're not going to have any problem uh, declining adjectives. Now, how do we use them? Well, remember, they match in gender, number, and case. And we're going to get three principal parts. We're going to get our masculine, sophos, our feminine, so, uh, sophē, and neuter, sophon. This is an eta type. So there's no epsilon, iota, or rho in the stem. And we take a look. Ho anthropos. See, okay, it's masculine, nominative, singular. So if we're going to have the wise man, sophos means wise, we have to use the masculine nominative singular form of sophos, which is sophos. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about location in just a second. Tain makin, the battle. Well, we see this is feminine, accusative, singular. So we would need the feminine accusative singular form of sophē, which is sophēn. Tadendra, it's neuter. Nominative or accusative. Plural. It right? doesn't really matter because our adjective is going to be sofa. Ta sofa dendra, ta dendra, ta sofa, and so on. Tu snanias, the young men. Well, this is masculine, accusative, plural. So we need the masculine accusative plural of sophos, that is. Sophus. All right, so we follow the masculine accusative plural, the second declension, even though this is a first declension noun. Tondoron, the gifts of the gifts. We know this is neuter, genitive, plural. Tondoron, sophon. And tais, timais, the honors. Well, it's feminine, dative, plural. So we need this feminine dative plural form of sophē, which is sophis. Now, where do we officially put these? Uh, there are two positions for adjectives. The first is the attributive position. We've already seen this with the genitive. But the most standard is between the article, called sophos, Anthropos, the wise man. So article, noun, adjective in between. We call that the attributive position. The attributive position also found we can repeat. So we can say ho anthropos. Anthropos. Repeat the article. Ho sophos. Again, it's after the article, so it's still the attributive position, the wise man. And the final way we can do this is we can say anthropos, we can omit the article in the first place, and then repeat the article, and place the article here before the adjective, osophos, the, the man, the wise man. So these are all the attributive position, these are all identical, they're all translated the same. Then we have the predicative position. And here, this would be essentially the opposite of that first one. So we have our article and noun, anthropos, the man, and then we're not going to repeat the article, but just place the adjective. So ho anthropos sophos. And this is a sentence. This actually means the man is wise. We don't need to use the word esti. 
is in here, uh, we can just use this position, the predicative position, to say, uh, to understand there is an is there. So those are the two basic positions of adjectives. Now, one last piece of, of information about adjectives, and that is to use the adjective substantively, a substantive adjective. And this means we're going to use the adjective as a noun, but without a noun. So what we have to do is understand, in this case, hokalos, we say, okay, it's masculine, singular nominative. We have an adjective here. Well, let's fill in a masculine singular space filler noun, like man. So hokalos equals the good or beautiful man. We don't need a word for man. The masculine aspect of it already fits that in. Or hey kale, here's feminine, so it's the good or beautiful woman. Or what frequently happens, takala, this is neuter in plural. So this is beautiful things. Now in all of these situations, notice we have an article. This article will help tell you uh, that we were dealing with a substantive. So if you have article plus noun, or article plus adjective, article and adjective with no noun, you supply a generic man, woman, or things.